Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of Once by James Herbert. So I'm going to be doing this in the way that I've done a few of my other James Herberts in the past, um, which is that I basically sort of almost do it as like a reading vlog. I've got some tabs here that I can talk to you about, but I, I have a lot of the book left to read, so we'll go through and I'll read that and update you over the next few days. But before we do that, here is the blurb. Dane reads... Remember the fairy stories you were told when you were a child? Tales of tiny magical winged beings and elves, wicked witches and goblins, demons. What if one day you found they were true? What if when you became an adult you discovered they were all based on fact? What if you met the fantasy and it was also very real? That's what happened to Tom Kindred. The wonders were revealed to him, but so were the horrors, for not far behind the good there always lurks the bad. And the bad had designs on Tom. The bad would show him real evil. He would see the hell hags and the demons. He would be touched by perverted passion and corruption, and he would encounter his own worst nightmare. The bad would seek to destroy him, and only the magic of the little beings would be able to help him. Once, James Herbert's masterful new novel of erotic love and darkest horror will take you to a realm where fantasy and reality collide, where fairy tales really can come true. From Britain's number one best-selling author of chiller fiction, this is James Herbert's finest novel to date. So at the beginning I thought this was quite cool, it's got this sort of title page here and it says Once, a scary tale of fairy folks and evildoers, of lovers in erotic passion, of horror and belief Written only for adults by James Herbert And it begins with, once upon a death And uh, it starts with, well I thought it was funny, um, his scant 27 years apparently were drawing to a close And I just thought that's a nice little reference to the 27 Club We have a chapter, chapter 3 is called A Walk Through the Woods Which is the title of a Bill Bryson novel and you see some magpies and you get the reference to the old uh, p the rhyme, one for sorrow, two for joy. Tom had never warmed to the crow family as a species, but for some reason among them he particularly disliked the magpie. Despite its sleek shape and beautiful black and white plumage and the glossy tail that in certain lights shone like a rainbow, the magpie had always been regarded as a bird of bad omen by country folk who, on sight of one, one for sorrow, two for joy, would spit three times over their right shoulder and say, Devil, devil, I defy thee! All nonsense, the townie and Tom told himself, yet he still felt uneasy under its black-eyed gaze. Perhaps it was because he knew there was something devious about its kind, who stole eggs from other birds and sometimes took away the nestlings. And um, this was cool because this is something that I've read about before because I like castles. Castles are fascinating. Um, so, Tom resumed the climb, boards creaking noisily beneath his feet. Normally, spiral staircases in castles and fortresses twisted to the right so that soldiers defending their ground had room to swing swords, or thrust pike staffs at advancing intruders whose own sword arms were disadvantaged. But Little Bracken's original architect obviously had only peaceful purposes in mind when he designed the banquet and its copycat tower, hence these stairs turned to the left. However, that non-military consideration had not prevented the boy Tom from engaging imaginary foes in battle there, his own short reach and wooden weapon unencumbered by the vagaries of architecture, the invisible villains easily beaten back by his ferocious attack. He talks about, because uh, the main character had a stroke, and he, and he goes, uh, Nighttime was always bad for stroke victims, for death was always closest when others slept and shadows seemed to beckon the invalid. That's one of the reasons why I, I struggle at night times as well. My depression and anxiety tend to be at their highest then. And uh, a character gives him like a, a, a healing balm that soothes a burn. But I just thought that was interesting because I read another uh, James Herbert book recently where someone was given a, a balm to treat a burn, burn as well. And Tom says um, he realised it was not death he feared, but what lay beyond, what came next. And I have death anxiety, but for me it, it's kind of the same, but because I think that nothing comes next, and I fear the nothing there. We get a reference to a silver birch, which um, there's some sort of symbolism to the silver birch for like a personal reason, which I thought was quite nice. It, it relates to one of my friends who is also a James Herbert fan, so that's what it was kind of cool. And we get the great line, but angels did not masturbate in the woods, did they? Someone has a smile that's mockingly challenging, which winds me up. Too many L-Y words, man. We get as well, uh, it's funny how the dying are afraid to fall asleep at night. So again, another little repetition of that. We also get a scene with a succubus in this, in which basically he's having sex with a beautiful woman and she slips the finger up the bum. Um, and he comes everywhere and then it turns out to be a succubus and the succubus is like getting the sperm and drinking it. It's very odd. <laughs> Trying to explain it with a straight face is, is strange. Sorry, I'm playing a game on my phone. I'm playing Fallout Shelter, it's addictive. Um, but I'm currently fighting off an attack from Summit. So I've just got to equip some people. Give them a missile launcher, quick. 
Don't let that person there die. Oh, we get this little bit, um, which is quite a famous um, hoax. There was a case early in this century where two little girls came to a photograph fairies. It was in a place called uh, Tom Racked His Brain. Cotting, Cottingly, I think. Before she died as an old lady, one of them confessed it had all been a hoax. They'd photographed paper cutouts of their own drawings. And what do you think they based those drawings on? Pictures from storybooks? Janet shook her head. Memories, she said. Oh, and um, we learned that fairies, their power is derived from everything around us. They don't need to eat or drink. So they're breatharian. Oh, and I, we get this, which is a nice little reference to Bjork. Um, were there, are there others like my mother? Undines or fairies posing as humans? Not posing, Tom. Assuming the identities of humans, there is no pretense involved. But to answer your question, yes, there are several of us walking your earth at this moment. Usually they're very discreet, but one in particular has already drawn too much attention to herself. She's quite famous. Oh yeah? Who might that someone be? She's an Icelandic singer. You humans think her a little eccentric, but in truth, she acts the way she does because she is still confused. She hasn't adapted yet, though she will in time. Meanwhile, most of you find her singing very strange, but persevere, eventually it will make sense to you. Oh, and it's pointed out that the main character, Tom, has something in common with Jesus, because they're both carpenters, which I'd noticed earlier, well, I'd thought about earlier on, and I wasn't sure if it was like a deliberate illusion or not, so I guess it was. Oh, and then John, Jonathan finds this altar. <laughs> so I'm just gonna read this out. Thick black candles at either end had been used, their frozen wax spilling onto the black cloth beneath. Other, thinner candles of gold and red were welded by their wax into tarnished holders. He thought there was a third black candle, but it was different from the rest, unburnt. Its top curving slightly to one side, its surface smooth, lustrous in the light from the window behind. Curious, yet unthinking, his mind assaulted from all sides by other things in the room, he picked up the object, and quickly put it down again, for it had no wick and it was definitely not a candle. It was too heavy to be made of wax. Why a black vibrator should be the centerpiece of an altar, he had no idea. But then, perhaps it wasn't an altar. Perhaps it was a shrine. A shrine to eroticism. We get this. Disgustedly and weepingly, he spits, he gets some spider in his mouth. But it's just, oh, weepingly. That's a terrible. Chapter 40 uh, from Nightmares, it begins with the line, They came from the darkness. Which just made me smile because the first line of my first published book, uh, No Rest for the Wicked, is They grew out of the darkness. Mysterious shapes that hid in plain sight and abstract mockery of the senses. I memorised the whole opening chapter back in the day. Oh, and then I just liked this line here. It's disgusting. Like, there is a lot of this, like this like body horror almost. So, um... The witch crones taunted her and curiously pulled at their own robes to reveal their dried up wrinkled bodies to her. Their ugliness caused Tom to wince. Their flat drained breasts hung low over their bellies. Their sallow flesh was alterated and blistered, tormented further by vivid unlanced boils. The lips of their hairless vaginas were distended and horribly puckered and he wondered why they would cavort and display themselves in this way. So final thoughts. Once by James Herbert, I mean I didn't really enjoy the fairy tale aspects of it and I mean, the kind of like erotic bits of it is fine, you know? Um, and he writes it better than most, I think, but I didn't like the way that lesbianism was portrayed as being due to either um, being molested or due to um, the forces of darkness. So I, I wasn't too keen on that either. Overall, I gave it like a weak 3.5 out of 5, maybe even a 3 out of 5. It's not his best, but I'm glad I read it and ticked it off, and that's about all I've got for you. So there you have it, that's what I made of Once by James Herbert. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.